my name is Nathan Magola. I am uh, an advertising copywriter. I write commercials. I am a writer and uh, I am a producer. I am the CEO of Evangelion Productions. Opportunities are here. I'm a producer and uh, producers are concerned with the business aspects of filmmaking. Uh, in the business of film, it's not any different from any other business in the sense that uh, first you need like a product that people are willing to pay for and then uh, people who are willing to pay for that product. So in my case, uh, my product or my service is a story. So I come up with stories that I think people will be willing to pay for and then um, I turn those stories into either a film or a TV series and then I try and sell that to different people whether I'm selling um, physical DVDs or I'm selling to a streaming uh, platform or I'm selling to um, a broadcaster or I'm just putting uh, the film in um, in the theater so people can come and pay to watch that film. In uh, what I do, uh, it may seem very complicated, but um, on a very basic level, I am not any different from, say, um, a promoter for music. That say, you know, you know somebody like Balam, that Balam will know that uh, maybe Chameleon is a very popular artist, and then he'll organize um, a concert for Chameleon, but then he has to go out and uh, look for sponsors, people with money, um, look for service providers, and then he puts uh, the concert together. So in the same way, I come up with uh, stories and then I'm going to look for people who have the financing and then I'll find the actors, I'll find the crew, I'll find the locations and basically just bring everything to life and then um, find somebody to sell that too. And uh, yeah, that's what the business is about. Yeah, in terms of strategies, this is not any different from any other product. So first of all, you have to know that, okay, for example, I do a, a TV show. So I have to know that uh, uh, in terms of um, like audience for TV who are like, you know, the biggest audience. So for that, I know that uh, um, it's women, females. And then I know that uh, at the certain time when my show is supposed to be on air, what else is on the what? On the other like channels. So that kind of gives me an idea of what kind of story that I should come up with. Because then I know that if the biggest audience is women, then I'm going to have to come up with a story that kind of resonates with women. So women are into, you know, shows that kind of uh, have female leads. Women are into family. Uh, women are into like, you know, romance, you know, love stories. So in that case, those are the kind of what? stories that I come up with. So um, for the most part, I try and come up with stories that are kind of have different generations in terms of, you know, the characters. So you kind of have uh, the grandparents, you have the parents, and then you kind of have the kids that, you know, every kind of audience segment is uh, taken care of. The fact is that uh, filmmaking is a very expensive endeavor. It uh, requires a lot of money. But one of the biggest misconceptions is that uh, people think that you need a lot of money to get started. That is not true. The reality is that uh, there are lots of entities, there are lots of say, broadcasters, there are lots of producers, uh, uh, film studios, and everything who are interested in stories. 
because they are out of what stories. So good stories is a very scarce uh, commodity. So the thing that you need first is you need to have a very good story. And once you have a very good story, I can guarantee you there are people who are going to come to you with money looking to turn that story into what? Into a film or a TV series. So I believe it all starts from that level. There is um, a thing that is not so common and unknown to people is called development. That stage is super crucial. That uh, people think that you're going to write a script in maybe a week or you know a month, and then it will be good enough for somebody to invest their millions of shillings. No, you may probably have a very good idea, but it's not yet at that level. So you need to spend a lot of time working on your stories, working on your script. Uh, you have to give it to uh, maybe people you trust to kind of read it and uh, give you feedback. But then there's also lots of um, screenwriting workshops and uh, development labs that you can get into. And once you get into these workshops and labs, you're going to find uh, script consultants, uh, script doctors, script mentors who are going to help you read it and then they'll give you feedback and they'll say this sounds good but then maybe improve here and there that you know once you're done with that process um, the script is strong enough and uh, if you have a very strong script and you are able to kind of pitch it present it there are so many people who are looking for these stories the people are going to bring you the money and you'll be able to turn this into what into a story into a film or a tv series In terms of uh, uh, the major players, people who we should uh, have on our radar, is that uh, maybe we are not that uh, fortunate that uh, uh, we have lots of them. But then uh, sometimes, you know, when uh, these festivals are happening, you know, we have the Uganda Film Festival. Uh, some once in a while, there is a festival by the European Union in Uganda. So when things like that, you know, come up, always go there. You're going to meet, you know, like-minded people, people in the pipeline who maybe they are missing to kind of get you, who are going to be the bridge to get you from this stage to the next one, to the next stage. So you have to go into, um, I don't know now because several years ago, the National Theatre used to be like, you know, a very good place to go. But I um, haven't been there in a while. But right now, I think every Tuesday evening, there's what they call the film club. It's always going on. So in there, you'll find, you know, different people in the food chain giving talks and uh, people just you know, like networking, meeting each other and talking. So all those things are important. Uh, but then um, if you can afford, maybe it's, uh, you could go to places like, you know, the Zanzibar International Film Festival, whereby you'll be able to meet some other people from around the world who can, you know, get you to the next level. In terms of uh, generating revenues, uh, first of all, I'll tell you that uh, for me, ever since I got into the film business, I understood that, uh, well, different people have different approaches, but for me, I understood that my approach was uh, I don't spend my own money on productions. So I'm not a kind of producer who uh, is always producing work, you know, every year because I don't spend my own money on production it's going to take me whatever time amount of time it takes me to raise the financing to do the production for me to do my next one my next production so uh in terms of revenues there is uh like two approaches to it the thing is that the way the business works is that uh, you're probably not going to make money on one film that's a fact 
so the business works in terms of what in terms of volumes so like you hear that you know maybe one hollywood studio is going to make five maybe ten films a year so that's how they make money and then the money uh, it kind of takes a long time for you to get the money so traditionally the way it would work is that uh, you would make a film and then put it in the theaters and get some money like from the theaters right and then you kind of like go on to the next stage uh, put out like uh, VHS tapes or DVD DVDs and then you sell and recoup some money off that and then you go to the next stage which would be like TV you sell like to a TV station and then you know you recoup like that but then this one film is a film that you're going to sell over years so each year you're kind of selling to a different person so over time that's how you make your money back but then because I said you don't get the money from one film that you know once that one film has started like the process you start another film into the process so like the first film or the first film was in the theaters and now is uh, selling on DVD so by the time you're selling the first film on DVD you have a new film in the theaters and then by the time that film gets to DVD, you have another film in the theater. So the flow keeps going like that, that you're not going to make money from one film. It works in volumes. But then these days, uh, with the prolification of um, streaming platforms, you know that you know, people are making what? People are making films and TV series direct for the streaming platforms. But then these streaming platforms are kind of like buying you out. So it's like, okay, if you've made your film for 20 million, they are going to buy it like for 30 and, you know, give you a profit of 10. And they take the film, they own the rights and everything, and then you move on. So now that's kind of the trend right now. There are challenges in uh, finding financing, but then over the course of time, I've realized that that's not only the only challenge. There's also a challenge of uh, actual equipment that are right now so many people are in production. Before we used to have like uh, equipment higher places, but now they are overwhelmed and uh, so many times starters, you don't have uh, the finances to buy your own equipment. So there's also that challenge. But then there's also a challenge of um, uh crew and cast before it seemed like uh we had enough crew we had enough cast we had enough equipment because all the different players were kind of uh producing at different times so if i need to go on set today and produce something i'll find the actors i'll find the crew i'll find the equipment and then a colleague of mine who wants to produce tomorrow will go and find them tomorrow but then the problem is when both of us are working at the same time because when i'm working today and my colleague is working tomorrow and another one is working the other day we are all using the same equipment we've hired from the same place we are using the same actors we are using the same crew so when you get to a point whereby all of you are working at the same time that's when it actually occurs to you that uh, there is um, a deficit for all these things so right now what we've been doing is that uh, We've been going out and uh, trying to bring new people into the fold. So we start working like with new talent, with a new crew, with new actors. That way we can uh, kind of get over what? That problem. But then, like I said in the beginning, in terms of financing, that uh, there are lots of entities whose business is in film and TV. There are TV stations whose uh, business relies on TVs, on, on TV series and on movies. So they need those things. Uh, right now we are in the age of streaming. So you have the likes of uh, Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, Hulu, uh, HBO Max, uh, Disney Plus, uh, Showmax. All those entities are looking for content and uh, they know that uh, local people prefer stories that are kind of relevant to them. So they are going out and producing stories for 
different communities in different uh, localities. So in terms of Africa, they've also started like what? Producing content for Africa, but then they know that African filmmakers understand the stories that resonate with African audiences. So they're interested in what? African filmmakers creating African stories. And uh, they know that despite all the money that they have, they can't come to Africa and do an authentic African story better than African filmmakers. So they would rather invest in African filmmakers to create uh, local stories for their audiences. So all those are opportunities and all we have to do is uh, kind of just up our skills in terms of production, but most importantly, in terms of the actual storytelling, the writing, that once we are good with that, there are so many opportunities and uh, we'll come to a point where but we are just running away from the opportunities. We are just overwhelmed. Like every project is different from uh, the last one. So um, people do different, uh, different projects for different reasons. Sometimes um, you're going to make a film because you want to make money. Sometimes it's not actually about the money. It's just a story that intrig intrigues you and you're very interested in telling it. Uh, but then, you know, sometimes we are kind of just doing it for just to feel good that you want to make a film and feel good about it to win awards. Um, but all these different reasons are kind of valid in the sense that uh, um, the, the film festivals are very important in the business of film in the sense that uh, so many times they kind of, they are the place where the commercial journey of the film starts. So it's probably the first place where um, the a general audience, the public is going to watch your film. But then uh, in terms of uh, what you benefit out of a film festival is that uh, so many times you're going to find actual distributors. That's where they're going to find the film. So they're going to see it there and then they'll be like, okay, you know, I'm from Korea. I think I like to uh, take this film and show it in what? Um, theaters in Korea or show it on a TV station in Korea or... Um, the other thing is that so many times you'll find some people there they're like, okay, we've seen this film. Maybe it's not the one for us. Something is missing from it. But then the way you've done it, we see there's a lot of uh, talent I'm promising you. So maybe let's work on another project together. Uh, these awards... Um, prestigious in the sense that uh, uh, they give you recognition that um, at um, when you say I am Nathan Magola, an award-winning filmmaker, that uh, if you're listening to me, even if you haven't actually seen anything I've done, in your mind, you already know that, okay, this is not a what? This is not an average filmmaker. This is somebody worth paying attention to. So they kind of... Uh, um, get you out of the crowd and they kind of what elevate you but then also several times some of these uh, awards and festivals have uh prizes that come with cash so uh the those cash prizes kind of help you make back some of the money that you invested Since we are talking about the film business and uh, that means the business aspects of it, uh, it is super important to kind of formalize and the sense that you have to register your company, get in a team and uh, that will help you uh, get a bank account uh, because nobody is going to give you money in your own personal names. Nobody is going to give money to Nathan Magola. At least we are talking a meaningful amount of money. Uh, but then also that means that uh, you're going to have to need uh, maybe somebody who, with a legal background to kind of do uh, uh, contracts for you. Basically, that involves the contracts that you give to, you know, the service providers and, uh, you know, the actors, the crew and everything. But then also that means in terms of whoever else is giving you a contract, 
you have, need to have somebody to go over that so they can advise you if you are getting into um, a good contract or you are getting into a contract that robs you. Like I said in the beginning that uh, um, when, you are when you start a production company, your main key thing, the most important thing that you're going to need, your main uh, asset is going to be the intellectual property. Uh, now, for me, I'm kind of lucky that uh, I can come up with, you know, ideas for the shows or the films that I do. But then a lot of people uh, may be more versed with the technical aspects. So maybe somebody is, just knows how to operate a camera, uh, somebody knows how to edit, but then they need that intellectual property. So you're going to need to hire somebody to do the writing for you. But then it's super important that you have an airtight contract with that person because from my experience, a lot of times we start doing things out of the passion we have for the storytelling. But once um, people realize that uh, there's actually money to be made from these things, people start turning around and then you end up having so many disagreements and conflicts. So it's super important to have airtight contracts from the get-go so that in case of uh, disagreements in future, those can easily be resolved. In terms of, you know, how much you have to get paid for the content, uh, like I explained to you in uh, some time back, I was saying that uh, this is kind of like a long term thing. But then also you have to know that uh, you're not going to get your money back from one entity, that there are those windows that I told you about that, you know, you're going to make some money from the theaters selling DVDs and then you're going to get some money from what selling like to TV stations. But then you have to realize that uh, uh, there are so many TV stations that are what you have to do is you kind of have to expect a little from each of those. So the reason why um, so many entities say TV uh, stations here are um, reluctant to produce uh, local content is because local content is super expensive. Say maybe it will cost maybe anywhere from maybe seven to 10 million shillings to produce an episode of something. And uh, that is not money that a local TV station is willing to pay you. But then they realize that say, if they get um, a Hollywood production, they're able to pay like $200 for that Hollywood production. But then Hollywood is selling an episode at $200 because they know they are selling an episode to maybe one TV station at 200 for every country in the world. So they know that, you know, once you aggregate all that, it's actually a lot of money. A little bit about my background. I had always been interested in uh, entertainment and I even thought at some point that maybe I'd be a musician. But then I got to a point where I realized that maybe I didn't have uh, a talent for that. But then I got so interested in uh, music videos and uh, I thought I'd be a music video director. But then uh, um, most uh, music video directors are also commercial directors. So I ended up in commercials where I, I, I was a writer, I would write the commercials. But then when you write the commercial, you are the one who understands um, it better than the people who are doing production. So most times you find that you actually hire a production company, but then you kind of have to tell them what to do. So I went to work in uh, advertising for a couple of years, but on the side, I kept making uh, films and short films. Um, at some point I realized that while well, I was making very good money from uh, advertising, but I knew that ultimately I wanted to make films, so I had to make a decision uh, to leave because I figured that, you know, at some point I may find myself 60 years old and still um, working in advertising. So I left and uh, 
from that point on, I kept doing uh, lots of courses like in Europe. But then I was working at Fenon Entertainment where I was uh, head of uh, audio and video. So I worked at Fenon Entertainment for about five years. And then I quit uh, shortly before COVID to start uh, my own uh, production company. And uh, when I started the company, uh, the first project that I did was a TV series called Prestige. And uh, after that, right now I'm doing uh, Shoko Beloved. My transition from uh, uh, working uh, uh, Fenon Entertainment and then uh, uh, studying my own uh, production company may seem like in a walk in the park, but uh, behind what seems like a smooth transition were years of training, um, years of you know grinding, and uh, in terms of training, I found that uh, um, the key skills that were needed were like you know the skill of uh, the skill of pitching uh skill of you know budgeting uh pitching in the sense that uh, um there's both the paper pitch and uh, the verbal pitch that are uh, you supposed to be in position to write uh, a bunch of document things like you know synopsis treatments uh director statements uh the actual producers writers and uh uh, director statement of intent, uh, finance plans, um, mood boards, uh, all those things, the words sound very foreign, but are they actually things that are on the internet, things that like you can look up and know how to do. So just like any other business that for you to get um, meaningful business, be it like all these corporate companies, when they need business, they have to write proposals. They have to go in front of uh, uh, boardrooms and make presentations. So those are also things that you also have to do as a film producer and you have to be comfortable doing them. And if you don't know how to do any of those things, it's high time you learned how to do them.